Shalom, I'm Officer Jadiel of IUIC and I'm here to let you know the Kafala system is biblical prophecy and the people in that Kafala system are the Israelites. What we have to understand is nothing on this earth is being done for no reason. The slavery, the oppression, the atrocities you see being committed in the Kafala system, they're all being done for a reason and I'm here to let you know why. First we're going to start with the book of John chapter 8 and verse 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. When Christ walked the earth, his goal was to let his people, the Israelites, know the truth of the Bible. The reason why is because they were facing many oppressions. They were oppressed by the Romans and they were dealing with many atrocities similar to the Kafala system. And what he wanted to let them know was, why is this happening? In these last days, that's what we need. We need to understand what is God's plan, right? Well, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10 and understand something. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Everything doing, being done on the earth is the Lord's pleasure. It's the Lord's counsel. It's what the Lord wants to happen. But why? He wouldn't just do these things and not explain why. That's what Christ was teaching the people. So everything you see happening today in the Kafala system is for a reason. And the reason is that the Israelites must come back to God. We're going to dig into that today. We're going to show why the Kafala system is biblical history. So we're going to read this first section. It says, what is the Kafala system? The kafala or sponsorship system defines the relationship between foreign workers and their local sponsor or kafil, which is usually their employer. It has been used in Gulf Corporation Council countries, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, as well as Jordan and Lebanon. Both Bahrain and Qatar claim to have abolished the system, though critics say reforms are poorly enforced and do not amount to abolition. The system applies to almost all foreigners working in a kafala host country, compromising all nationalities, economic classes, and professions. Today, most of these workers come from Africa and South Asia. They often take jobs that nationals find undesirable for financial or cultural reasons, such as construction, domestic work, or in service industries. They also earn less than locals. In Jordan, for example, minimum wage for foreign workers is $350 monthly, while nationals earn at least $367. Real quick, I want to go back to the Bible. I want to read a verse in Deuteronomy 28. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. And it says, The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head and thou shall be the tail. That was verse 43 and verse 44. What it's showing you is that what? The Israelites would be in a position of economic poverty. So when you look at the, the things that are being faced in the Kafala system, you see the people are trying to get ahead financially, but they are on the bottom. They are making less than the poorest people in the country. They're not making what the 1% make. They're just going there to another land to scrape crumbs. They come from one land where they're on the bottom and they go to another land where they remain on the bottom. Some of the things they face, restricted movement and communications. Also they face debt bondage. We just read that in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 43. They also face forced labor. They are forced to work for those different people. Visa trading, that's another issue they face. They also face irregular residency status. One of the things I want to call out with visa trading is the people visas are actually traded or sold to other people. They're actually being sold to other people, right? So that is no different than slavery in old times. They're selling the rights to these individuals, right? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68 really quickly. It says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. The word Egypt means slavery, right? Again, with ships. By the way, wherever I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. The word buy there means redeem. So what's happening to the Israelites still to this day is they are being sold. Their rights are being sold. They are not seen as humans, as individuals on the earth, although they try to perpetuate that in Lebanon, they are being traded like cattle, like beasts. Why are Africans migrating to this land and being placed on the bottom of society? Why are the Bantus going there and being put on the bottom of society? What is happening? Why is that land theirs? Why are the people there oppressing the people who the land was given to? Real quick, we're going to read another scripture. Watch this. 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 21. We're going to read that. And it says,